Welcome back scholars. This video will be about titrations. And as we just said, and we will continue to use from the prior video, if you have hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide reacting, those would make water and sodium chloride. You would expect this to be a neutral solution when no excess remains of the reactants. And so then the question really kind of becomes, how do you detect when the reaction is complete? And to be able to answer this, we need to go back to thinking about pH. And we really need to think about what's commonly called a titration curve. And so what I've done here is I've taken some time in Excel to build up exactly what we were doing at the end of the last video on pH calculations. And I've done this in Excel to make it a little bit faster to do. And all I've done with each of these steps is I've calculated how many moles of H plus were remaining after some portion of base solution had been titrated into a sample. So I've chosen to start off here with a 0.1 molar solution of HCl and a 0.01234 molar solution of sodium hydroxide. And that 0.1 molar solution of HCl starts off at a pH of one, as we would expect it to. And what happens is that pH slowly rises as we gradually add in some sodium hydroxide into the solution. When we get closer and closer to being completely reacted with the HCl, the pH starts to rise a little bit. And between this dot, this point here, and this point here is simply one milliliter. It is easier to get, a, get smaller increments with certain kinds of glassware, but not much smaller and not necessarily very accurately. And so what we see here is we see a big change in this pH. And this big change in this pH is centered around a pH of seven because this reaction would be neutral when there's no excess acid or no excess base. And this sharp change is really what, what we wanna be able to look for when we're doing what's called a titration. And so let's come back to the, let's come back to the, reaction and talk about how we would perform this reaction. And so the HCl would be in some type of a container, a beaker or a flask. The NaOH would be in something that we call a burette. And this burette would allow us to slowly drip in the sodium hydroxide into the solution down here. Maybe you've got a magnetic stir bar down at the bottom that's spinning around. And the other thing that's necessary here is an acid base indicator or a pH indicator. And the most common one that you might see in the laboratory is an indicator called phenol phthalene. And what this is, is it's colorless below a pH of about 10. And it's very bright pink above a pH of about 10. And so if we come back and look at our titration curve, And we see that we get to 10 or, or nine, I don't recall the pH for phenolphthalein exactly off my head, but I know it's pink when it is in a alkaline solution. And you see that you can get there pretty quickly, right? But the important thing to notice is that for us to be up here and see a pink solution, that means we've already gone past a little bit what our exactly equal point is here in this reaction. And so when we do titrations, there's really two points. There's the equivalence point, 
wear moles of H plus exactly equal moles of hydroxide. If that's true, then that's a neutral solution in the case here with HCl and NaOH. For other reactants, it might not be neutral. So our acid and our base are exactly equal at the equivalence point. But for us to stop the titration, we're using this indicator. And when we stop the titration, that's called an endpoint. And the endpoint is where a sharp change is observed. Now, if you're lucky, you might see that sharp change if you have a pH electrode in solution and you're tracking your pH and then all of a sudden you put a little drop in of your base and you see the pH change by a lot. But you might never hit perfectly with a point, the equivalence point. And so this is where pH curves like this come into play. And if you graphed experimental evidence like this, then you would be able to identify your equivalence point. But this is also where acid-base indicators come into play. In an acid-base indicator that changes close to, even if it doesn't change exactly at the equivalence point, can still be used. So this phenolphthalein, which changes bright pink, is gonna change just after the equivalence point. And any question that you're given, any information that you're given about this titration, you're going to make the assumption that these two are equal. So we assume these are equal unless we're given other information. And they are in fact usually so close together that assuming they're equal gives us an extremely small error in any calculations that we do with that volume. And what you can then do is you could then go through stoichiometry. So let's say that we had an unknown sample, unknown concentration of HCl, but I took 25 milliliters of it. And I reacted this with, or I titrated it with, titrated by, this was titrated by, let's say 37.37 um, milliliters of 0 0.09892 molar sodium hydroxide. What happens when you do titrations is that you first standardize your solution. That is why this is known to such a high um, accuracy, high precision for the concentration. So now thinking about our mole map, we wanna take our moles of sodium hydroxide and we're assuming that the, those are equal to our moles of HCl we wanna take our moles of NaOH and convert them to moles of HCl so that we can find the concentration of this solution. So to start off, let's say that I know it took me 37.37 milliliters of NaOH to react with 25 milliliters. And I'm gonna go ahead and give that two more zeros of HCl. Now nothing right now will cancel, right? Except for my milliliters and my milliliters. I could get rid of both of those millis because they're on both sides of the fraction. So now if I'm pretending that it took me 37.37 liters of sodium hydroxide for 25 liters of HCl, now my liters of sodium hydroxide I can turn into moles. So remember, molarity is simply moles per liter. So I have 0 0.09892 moles of NaOH. 
for every one liter of NaOH. Now my liters of NaOH cancel. Now I have moles of NaOH and from my balanced reaction, remember I started this in the beginning, we were talking about how the proportions would react and it's a one-to-one -one in this reaction. So now one mole HCl for every one mole NaOH, my moles of NaOH cancel. And what am I left with? I'm left with moles of HCl per liter of HCl solution. So this is going to give me my molarity. And this would come out as 0 0.1479 molar HCl. Now in the lab, you might actually perform this multiple times. You would do multiple trials and you would determine exactly how much of the sodium hydroxide it took each time. From that, you might get slightly different numbers here, but some of that is also gonna depend on how far you went past the equivalence point when you hit the end point with your indicator. When you do that then and you have several trials, then you can take the average of those to arrive at the true concentration of the HCl. You can also use a similar technique if you have to do what's called a back titration. And so antacid tablets, if we were in the school, we would do this. You would take some Tums and you would crush them up into chunks or finer powder. And into those Tums, you add some HCl solution. The HCl solution that you add reacts with your antacid, making sodium, um, yeah, making sodium chloride and H2O and CO2, but the secret is that you add excess HCl. And then you come back to this and you have your excess HCl that you titrate with your sodium hydroxide. And if you know that you added, let's say 10 moles of HCl, but that when you did the titration down here, you only found 7.7 .7 moles of HCl from your volume of NaOH and concentration of NaOH, then that tells you how much of the HCl reacted with your antacid tablets. And we could go through and we could do calculations for that to determine how effective different types of antacid tablets are. And that's a very fun lab to do. Um, again, you would need an acid base indicator if you're doing stuff with HCl and NaOH, then phenolphthalein is the typical indicator because colorless to pink is a pretty easy color change to observe. And um, the stoichiometry here applies to any kind of a problem that you're trying to work through, that you're trying to think about with solutions. So if you're looking for the concentration of an unknown sample, this is generically the approach you would take. But for any other thing, you, all you need to think about is using your volume and your concentration to get to moles of your reactant or moles of your product, whichever one you happen to be interested in. And so titrations are a classic method of doing analytical chemistry and is determining what is in something that's unknown. If you at least have some idea about the identity, then it's a lot typically a lot easier to set up the titrations and then you're just trying to determine the concentration. But you could do titrations with titration curves for unknown acids and bases, specifically for weak acids and bases, which would really be an honors chemistry kind of a topic, but that we don't really have time for with the distance learning. The secret to those titrations though would be that you look at the shape of the curve here before you get to the equivalence point or the end point. And so this is just a little bit about acid-base reactions. Hopefully this also helps you with some of the stoichiometry for the solutions. Um, if not, then again, jump into Zoom for office hours or post some comments in the discussions for other people or myself to respond to. Thanks for watching.